bless us. Man, hallelujah. For our preaching, we will have our Reverend Selvin White. We serve a mighty good God. And He is definitely worthy of all the praise. You may take your seats. We give honor to God tonight. Give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Give honor to the precious Holy Spirit who dwells on the inside. Giving honor to uh, my bishop, Reverend Richard Curtis, in his absence, to Pastor Samuel Melendez, Glory. Hallelujah. to Brother in ministry. I salute you, sir, to all the ministers, elders in the house tonight. We just bless God for being here one more time. Glory. Hallelujah. We honor God for this youth campaign. And I thank God for the youth of your church. And thank you for having me back. It's been a while. You all look well. When I received the... Oh, stop. When I received the flyer, I was sitting at home and I'm like, okay. So the theme for them... This youth campaign is fill me up. And so I'm looking at the flyer of this old school gas pump. So I said, okay. I said, okay, I, I'm, I'm tracking where they're going with this thing. But what hit me though is coming in the building tonight, I'm seeing the uniform. So then it is taking me back in time, driving in my father's car, going to the gas station. And, and seeing the employees in uniform. I mean, my dad was cool with, you know, pumping his own gas, but I still remember seeing the employees in uniform asking if they could be of any assistance. So I, I love the uniform. And thank you for my shirt. I'm going to wear it tomorrow, and I'm going to post some pictures. I might take a couple of trips to different gas stations and act like I work there. And then I'm going to post them on Facebook so you all can see. But I thank you for the shirt. And I, I do bless God for your theme. Praise God. Now, you know, all the years that we've been together, Amen. you know that I like to have a conversation. Amen. You know, I don't hoop and holler. But you know, I just like to talk. And I like to have a conversation. And you know I like to ask questions. So let me ask the first question. Ready? How did you come up with this theme? This type of rap? Come on, somebody. How did you come up with this theme? Did God give it to one of you? A number of you? How did this happen? Oh, so you listen to that song by Tasha Cobb, Fill Me Up and, and It Hit You. And you say, you know what? That's going to be our theme for this youth campaign. Let me say something about you young people. God is blessing you all tremendously. Amen. Because the year that I've been coming here, I've been noticing every theme that you choose, Amen. it really demonstrates your level of maturity. Because like, you're not kids anymore. And the fact that this year's theme is fill me up, it takes a mature person to come to God and say, Lord, I need you 
to fill me up. So I bless God that that song touched you all in a way that you decided to make that your theme for this youth campaign. So we bless God for that. Amen. I don't plan on being before you long, but there are a few things that I would like to share with you, and I probably will ask some more questions. So just bear with me. We're going to pray. So those who can stand, we're going to pray. And we're going to work with this passage that you chose as your theme. We're going to stay right there in it. But let us pray first. Most Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. We bless you for this youth campaign and the beginning of it, Lord God, for this year. Lord God, you know what your will is for us tonight. I am praying that you move by your spirit right now. Lord, fill us all up right now with more of you. Lord God, more of your spirit, more of your power, more of your love, more of your peace. Lord God, all the things that we need tonight, you know. And Lord, I'm also praying that you will bless the youth during this campaign. God, that every night, Lord God, of this campaign, that you would fill them with more of you. Amen. And that you would truly equip them Amen. to do the work of ministry, Lord God, the work of love that you have assigned Amen. to their hands. For you know their individual needs. Yes. And I pray, Lord God, that you would bless them according to their faith in you. Lord God, and I ask right now that you would use me yes. to be a blessing. Lord, hide me behind your blood-stained cross. And God, use me as your vessel tonight, Lord God, to impart something that's a blessing to those who hear. Amen. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. So again, your theme is found in the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. Correct? Yes. Okay. You all have read through this a number of times, I'm sure. Do you realize how deep this passage is? Do you realize there's a lot to unpack? I'm not going to do that tonight. But there's a lot to unpack here. But sticking with the theme of fill me up, what do you know about Paul? Because he's the one that wrote this. What do you know about him? Oh, Pastor. Hey, you picked the thing. You picked the scripture. Do you know anything about him? Someone said persecuted, you say he was a Pharisee. Okay. So he was one of those religious leaders. Hmm. When he started, he was a mean dude. Because he persecuted the church. He had Christians dragged out of their homes, out of their places of the worship, had many of them killed. This is before he met Jesus. This is who he was. But you know, he met Jesus one day. Amen. He was on a road to a city called Damascus, and he had some paperwork with him. He had some authority to arrest some Christians, whoever he found. So imagine him here today. He will bust the doors wide open and try to round us all up. So he was on his way to arrest Christians, but on his way, something happened to him that changed his life forever. He met Jesus Christ. And the light of Christ knocked him off of his beast that he was traveling on. Now there were people traveling with them. They heard the voice of Jesus, but couldn't see him. But that day changed the man's life. His name used to be Saul, but it was changed to Paul. He was blinded for a little while, but he was really seen. And so this same Paul became an apostle of Jesus Christ, and you realize that he wrote most of the New Testament, right? He wrote most of the New Testament. 
that we read today. And this letter is a special one because this is one of the letters that he wrote while he was in prison. Now I don't know about you. I have never been locked up before. But I know people who are locked up aren't the happiest people. But you have someone like Paul, who even though he was in prison, yes. he was thinking about people like you and I. Praise God. And so the love of Christ that was in him moved him to write this letter to the Christians in the city called Ephesus to encourage them. I find your thing very interesting because one of the things that was going on with the Christians in that city was that they didn't realize that spiritually they were wealthy. But they didn't realize. It. You ever heard of this expression, living beneath your privileges? They didn't understand their heritage. They didn't understand what was available. So they lived like this. And Paul wrote this letter to remind them of who they are. And so your theme for this campaign is fill me up. My prayer tonight is that I serve as a reminder to you of who you really are and what you have available. So here is my first question for you. I'm going to pick on the youth because this is your campaign. But this is a question for everybody. But I'm going to pick on you first. What do you want God to fill you up with? This is not a rhetorical question. I need an answer. Sarah, you're the first employee tonight, so you said patience. Why? Can anybody confirm that? <laughs> she said that she's asking God to fill her up with patience because she has a temper. Can, can, can you confirm that? <laughs> that's interesting. And that's a good one. Because I used to have a temper too. Now I will jokingly blame it on my father because he's West Indian from Antigua. Um, he was very hot-headed. I might have shared this story with you in the past, but I remember one day, he and I were on 3rd Avenue. I forgot what we went to buy, but there was a nice burgundy car he used to drive. It was called the Cordoba. I guess probably why that's my favorite color. <laughs> but he loved this car, and he took great care of this car. But this day, we went to a store to get something, and we came out the store, and there were three young men hanging around the car. <laughs> one person was leaning on the car. One person was, I think, sitting on uh, the hood of the car. And the third young guy was kind of like plucking the antenna <laughs> of the car. And my father lost it. He cussed all three of them out and was ready to fight them. So that's why I jokingly say that I, I inherited my temper at the time from him. Um, I'm, I was the kind of person, I didn't lash out right away. It would build up. And then it would be the right person who pressed the wrong button. And then it would just all come out. Unfortunately, that was one of my cousins who I grew up with. We're first cousins, only a couple of months apart, so he was like my brother. But he was only the one that pushed the wrong button. And so we had a lot of fights growing up. Yeah. So that is a good request to ask of God, to fill you up with patience. The reason why I'm asking this question is because we ask God for a lot of things every day. But a lot of times, we don't focus on why we're asking him for these things. Does that make sense? Yes. We ask him for things, but a lot of times, we don't really think about why am I asking God for this? See, this is why I'm asking you all the question, what are you asking him to fill you up with, and why? 
Anybody else? Eddie. <laughs> How's it going, buddy? I don't cover it up now. We from the Facebook anyway, so I mean, I know who you are, but hey, what are you asking God to fill you up with? A lot of things. You said a lot of things. Give me one. Wisdom. Mm. Wisdom. That's a good one. Why wisdom? Because I'm going into a field where I know many things are possible. God's <laughs> coming out. That's very honorable. You know, there was someone in the Bible. God appeared to this man. And he told him, you can ask me for anything that you want. And I'll give it to you. And this man told God, all I want you to bless me with is wisdom so that I can rightly judge your people. Do y'all know who that person is? Solomon. That's a very honorable request. So, no, I'm not gonna ask everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor, don't put me on the spot. But whatever it is that you're asking God to fill you up with, know the reason why. I don't want God to fill me up with more joy. Anybody want to know why? Ask me why. Thanks for asking. Because we live in a very cruel world. Every time you turn on the news, you come across something very depressing. I remember one weekend, <clears throat> a few Saturdays ago, I was home resting. And I was just looking at the highlights of the week. And I was looking at News 12, the Bronx. And no exaggeration, no lie. Every single story was either about a shooting, a robbery, you know, some type of death. And I'm sitting like, man, this is depressing. So one of the things that I ask God for every day is to fill me up with joy. Why? Because the Bible tells me that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. So there's the reason why I ask for joy every day. Because it's good to be happy. It's good to smile. And you never know the joy that the Lord blesses you with will spill over onto somebody else who may not be having a very good day. And that joy that spills over from you could be the very thing that they need. Make sense? Be impatient with people will help them with their own breakthroughs. That's why it's good to not be short-tempered. You never know what kind of blessing you could be to someone. And asking God for wisdom, you will never be led astray. And you will always make the right decisions. There is one verse in here that really jumped out at me. And so, I'm gonna bring you into the mind of Pastor White for a few moments. Verse 18 says, and again, this is, a, this is a part of a prayer that Paul was praying for the Ephesians. So he was sharing with them what he was asking God to do for them. And so in this part of the prayer, he talks about asking God to bless them with some type of understanding. To comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth, and the height. Can I ask you the question? The height is what? Did you ask yourself the question when you read this scripture? The height of what? The length of what? The depth of what? The width of what? What is it that God wants us to comprehend? Measurements. Dimensions. Anybody like math in here? Wow. Wait a minute. Those who like math, please raise your hands up high. Wow. 
Look at all these people who don't like math. <laughs> but, but you're sitting on a mathematical equation right now. Someone had to take the time to measure the piece of the wood and cut it out and then put it together. So you're sitting on math. But oh, we don't like math. The clothing that we're wearing is a product of mathematics. But God wants us to understand the measurements of things. Do, does anyone in here truly understand the love of God? Do you really understand how deep it is? I'm a pastor standing here before you and I'm telling you, I still don't understand how deep his love goes. Why? Because every day, he shows me something new. Every day, he expresses his love to me in a deeper way. And I'm not ashamed to say that it makes me cry sometimes. Because God has a way of touching you. It just gets you emotional. So God wants us to understand measurements, dimensions. And this is a lifelong thing. You want to understand the love of God, this is a daily thing. How deep his love goes. How wide it is. Some people say, well, just look to the cross. And you really want to know the dimensions the dimension of his love, look at the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. It is an actual word. Because a lot of people just say they love you. But I think we want them to show it. It's easy to say I love you. But it's a different thing when you have to demonstrate it. Does this make sense? So that scripture jumped out at me because God is deep. Have you ever read a passage one time and said, okay, I got it. And then you read it again and say, oh, I didn't see that before. Wow, that's different. And then you read it a third time, and it's like, oh, snap. I didn't see that before either. And a fourth time, and so on and so forth, you never learn enough. And God's love has so many different layers. So God wants us to understand measurements. Let me share with you one other thing. In verse 19, one of the other parts of Paul's prayer for the Ephesians was that he wanted God to bless them to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge. This sounds like a riddle to me. You want to know the love of Christ, but it passes on knowledge. So how do you know something that's beyond knowledge. See, there's a different understanding of the word know. It's not about just reading something in the book, oh, okay, I got it. No, when you know something, you are acquainted with it. Like by a personal experience. Does that make sense? You want to know the love of Christ by personal experience. When I was growing up in church, I first learned about the love of Christ by report. I heard people testify about the love of Jesus Christ. But I didn't quite understand it, but I listened to the testimonies of people talking about the love of Christ. And then as I got older and then I gave my life to him at the age of 16, then I began to understand and know his love through experience. We have all been forgiven by Jesus Christ. So through personal experience, we know his love. He has forgiven us of things that people still are holding against you. Let me say that again. Jesus Christ has forgiven us for things that people to this day still hold against you. Family members still hold things against you that you did like five years ago. 
you sat on my cupcake. Well, that was like five years ago. You still upset, but that was my favorite cupcake. I understand it, but how many cupcakes did you eat after that day, five years ago? Like, come on, are you still gonna hold that against me? But people hold stuff that's so stupid. It just makes no sense. Well, I didn't like the way you looked at me. Well, that was three years ago. Did you ask me why I looked at you? First of all, I don't even remember how I looked at you. Maybe I had a tummy ache. At the moment, you looked at me. And then all of a sudden now, in your mind, you created this world. I can't stand them now. Now you got other people involved. Now you got an entourage of people who don't like you because you had a tummy ache in that moment when you made a face. But don't you know people like this? It's like silly things that people will hold against you, but Jesus Christ has forgiven us of everything. I want you all to repeat something after me. I want God. Now, I want you to say it again like you really, really mean it. I want God. Okay, so we're getting there. So let, let's try this again. So, I want God. See, now your theme is fill me up. We got to remember who it is that we're asking for the refill. So I love the concept of the gas station. And, and I get it. When you go through your days, you get tired. There are different things that happen in our lives from a day-to-day -day basis that will drain you. Yes. Sometimes it can be a person. <laughs> See, I got a couple of chuckles there. So sometimes a person can drain you. Sometimes it can be those good old lovely family members. <laughs> that will just drain you. Because there are some people who like to complain. Uh -oh. And I know there's no one in here in this church, Pastor Melinda, that likes to complain. But I know a lot of folk that complain. And it is draining. Because it seems like they find every negative that they can pick on. So people can be drained. Your jobs can be drained. If you're still in school, that can be drained. Because studying can wear your head out. I remember college, I said that was draining for four years. And then, you know, I had the nerve to go to law school after that. No, oh, what the world was I thinking? <laughs> I had a full beard in like two days. <laughs> All that studying. But anyway, studying can weigh you out. So there's different things in life that will drain you. And we also understand that we have a common adversary. And so the enemy will always throw things at you to drain you. He is always preparing and laying traps to get us because he wants to wear us down. In my experience in dealing with the enemy, he doesn't come and step to me like this. Because if you see a punch coming, and I'm moving it very slow, what are you, gonna do? you have enough time <laughs> to do a lot of things. Thank you. <laughs> So if someone's coming at you, well now you already have a plan on how to defend. But the enemy doesn't do that. That's right. He's very crafty. So he comes sideways. A lot of times it'll just be little things to wear you down to a point where then now he hits you with that knockout punch. So we have different things that hit us. And something else that we don't focus on a lot. You can drain me. You can think about things that'll make you sad. Just like you can think about things that'll make you happy. You ever had a thought that made you sad? 
Like that crunch cupcake. <laughs> like you can think about something and then you so now think about this though. You have a thought, you entertain it, and it causes you to have an emotional reaction. So you can think about something and it makes you feel bad. So you can drain you. Depending on what you think about, it can bring you down. This is why you always want to think positive things. So draining can come from different directions. This is why we need the Lord to fill us up. And this is a daily thing. So I, I thank God for the analogy of that gas station. But there is a video that I want to show you. It's about two and a half minutes long. And I pray and hope it brings out a point. But again, who is it that we go to when we're asking for a fill-up? Who are we going to? We're going to God. Do we realize how big he is? Like we pray, but do you really take the time to think about how big God is? Like we know that God is omnipotent. Because we say that. He is almighty. He is the all-powerful, true living God. We say this in church. You know, we say God is omniscient. He knows everything. And we say God is omnipresent. He's so big, he's everywhere. We say these things in church, but do you really think about how big he is? Well, prayerfully, this video that's about to play will drive that point home. Words. 
And this was just a speck of the entire universe. Yet he created the universe just by speaking. We are amazed at how big these stars are. Now, God has blessed people with the ability to create telescopes to identify these things. But this is just a small portion of the universe that God has made. And I think as you were seeing the stars get bigger, you probably forgot about where Earth was, didn't you? So then you saw it again at the end of the show. Earth is like way over here. But you think about how small we are compared to how small the Earth is. We are minuscule. But here's the point. We're asking God to fill us up. This is what I want the church to remember. It does not matter how insignificant you think you are. God in all of his vastness still is concerned about you. He loved us enough to take the time to look at how he wanted us to be made. Now we are all one family, but when you look around, no two people look alike. You can tell who belongs to what family because some features are shared. But yet still, we are all our own unique individuals. Is that not the truth? For God has truly made us fearfully and wonderfully. But in the vastness of what he created, he cares about us. To the degree that he wants us to pray and talk with him and ask him for the refill. So now, if he could create this universe by just his word, what is being filled up with peace? What's being filled up with some wisdom, some joy, when this entire universe is still moving and spinning by his word? What's peace? What's joy? To God, it's a small thing. But he still cares about us in a huge way that he will answer your prayer. So don't be ashamed to pray to him for whatever it is you want him or need him to do for you, knowing in confidence that no, no matter what you ask of him, he will supply. He's a powerful God waiting for us to ask him for things so that he can grant the things. But he wants a closer relationship with us. So when we're asking him to fill us up, remember who he is. Remember how big he is, because sometimes, I don't know if you had this experience. There's been times in my life where I would pray, but I kind of pray halfway. It's kind of like that. Like, you know, Lord, I, you know, I want you to do this for me, but like, I'm not sure if you're going to do it. But then when I look at something like this, Thank you. it encourages me. I'm like, wait a minute. And you can make stars that big, and there are even bigger stars out there. Oh. Then I mean, no matter what I ask them, oh, surely you can handle that. Yes. Does, does this make sense? So when you ask him, God to fill you up, know that he will. Know that he can. Amen. Now, I don't know if you ever left water running in a faucet, in the kitchen sink, and it overflowed. Now, I'm not asking if you got in trouble or anything. Just, just, picture, just picture the overflow. I don't want certain parents in here to go back in town. I would beat that child behind. Like, just, just focus on the picture of the overflow. When you come to God and you're asking him for whatever, he is always the overflow. Because he poured out to us Amen. from an infinite source of everything. So he wants you to always be in a state of overflow. Now, there is a story I'm going to share with you, and I'm going to come to a close. Because thinking about how powerful he is and the overflow that he wants to bring to all of our lives, it reminds me of something that I used to do when I was a kid. I know I shared with you how I used to throw toys out the window and all that good stuff. <laughs> but what I did not share with you is that um, 
I used to be the kid who would put all his toys in the toilet bowl. Oh. <laughs> so there were many days of overflow in our apartment. Now, see, the beauty of the story is my father is a plumber. So it was easy for him to fix the, the clock and use his snake and get the stuff out. So it was good to have a father who's a plumber. But I was the kind of kid that would always do that thing. So it was always an overflow. And he wouldn't get upset. He would just look at my mother and my older sister and go, why you let him get in there? <laughs> like, you know he does, like, this is not the first time he's done this. Like, he does this repeatedly. Why do you let him get in there? And a lot of them know, well, you know, we didn't see him do it. Like, you got to keep that door locked to the bathroom. So he was upset with me because, you know, this is what children do because they have very creative imaginations and they are curious. So they would go, oh, what does that do? If I press that, oh wow, it flushes. What if I put something in there? Oh, it went down. How about another thing? How about an even bigger thing? Let's really spike this thing up. So that was me. But it's just the imagery of the overflow. Now I understand that that imagery is messy. But when God blesses you with overflow, it's all good. I don't mind the overflow of peace. Because can you really have enough of it? No. I don't mind an overflow of wisdom. Because you can never have enough of it. And I definitely don't mind an overflow of joy. A day never goes by in my household that there is no laughter. With six kids, they are all characters. They're all comedians. So my wife and, this, and, my wife and I, we just sit back and we just laugh at them be silly. Every single one of them. But again, it's an overflow of joy. But see, this is one of the things that I personally ask God to fill me up with, as well as my household. Joy. It's a cruel world out here. But in your home, there's safety. In God, there's safety. So in this campaign and beyond the campaign, when you're asking God for different things that you want him to fill you up with, yes. remember who he is. And remember why you're asking him for these things. Amen. So I pray and hope you were blessed tonight. Yes. Amen. It was a joy for me being here. And pray much for me, please. God bless you all. Yo sé que algunos miembros de la iglesia vinieron aquí que dominan más español y, y, y el mensaje de Pastor White fue tan bello y tan grande bendición que yo sé que va a impactar a todos los jóvenes y yo creo que vale la pena hablar un, un poquito de lo que él dijo en español porque es bien significa, significante, bien importante. Right, Pastor White, you understood that, right? You got that? Okay. All right, basically I said that it's really important what you said. And so I wanted some of the brothers who dominate Spanish to be able to appreciate some of it because I thought it was such a blessing. Y una cosa que yo quiero hacer es leer los versículos. Los versículos de esta campaña están basados donde? Yo no sé si los jóvenes me pueden decir donde están los versículos. Ephesians where? 3, ok, solo tiene, porque está escrito ahí. Oh, no lo tiene memorizado. Alright, so, 
Aquí están los versículos. Para que habite Cristo por la fe en vuestros corazones a fin de que arraiga dos, arraiga dos y ¿qué? Y, y cimentados en amor. Seréis ¿qué? plenamente cap capaces de comprender con todos los santos cuál sea la anchura, la longitud, la profundidad y la altura y de conocer el amor de Cristo que exige a todo conocimiento para que seas llenos de toda la plenitud de Dios. ¿Es that it? Up to there. Y una cosa que el pastor preguntó a los jóvenes era de qué es que quieren ser llenados. Y los jóvenes lo pensaron. Uno dijo paciencia. Otro dijo sabiduría y nosotros decimos amén, porque Dios nos puede bendecir con eso. Y también el pastor White dijo que él siempre pide gozo. He always asks for joy. Porque él sabe que la fuerza de Jehová es, el, el fuerza, la fuerza viene por el gozo que Jehová nos da. Right? Él sabe eso. Y él lo pide de él y también él mencionó, él mencionó como el versículo dijo que nosotros vamos a recibir el amor que viene de Dios y cómo podemos comprender el amor de Dios que es tan grande que ni lo podemos medir es tan inmenso que es más allá del entendimiento que solamente lo podemos empezar a entender por nuestras experiencias Right? That's what he said. Am I right so far, guys? Okay, very good. Y entonces él llegó al punto de lo que nosotros necesitamos cuando nosotros queremos ser llenados y nosotros necesitamos ser llenados porque a veces nos sentimos vacío o nos sentimos how you say like we're drained, drained. Bueno, vacío, right? que no estamos que gastando, que nuestro poder está gastando, nuestra energía está gastando, nuestro deseo se está gastando, gastando. Y, y él, él habló de todas las cosas que nos pasan en la vida, que a veces hay una persona que nos afecta, el jefe, o problemas, o dificultades, o enfermedad, o lo que sea en nuestra vida, que nos, ¿qué? nos está ¿qué? vaciando. Y cuando venimos a Dios, es que necesitamos más de él, necesitamos ser llenado. Y a veces pensamos en sabiduría, en amor, en paz y todas esas cosas, pero también necesitamos más de Dios para él levantarnos, para nosotros poder seguir, para él darnos el motivo para seguir, el deseo para seguir, llenarnos de ese gozo, la fuerza que necesitamos para seguir, tenemos que buscarlo de Dios. Y al final, él nos aseguró que Dios es más que capacitado. ¿Y por qué que sabemos que Dios es más que capacitado? ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué lo sabemos? Porque Él es un Dios inmensamente grande. Y representó el universo, el right? universo. Él lo representó y nosotros miramos el universo y nosotros wow, él es tan maravilloso ver la grandeza del universo y pensar que hace, al lado del universo Dios es así de grande y el universo es así de chiquito Dios es más grande que el universo Él existe fuera del universo y Él existe en todo el universo y todo el universo depende de Él nosotros dependemos de Él nuestra existencia depende de Él Él es bueno la Biblia lo dice, lo, dice, lo dice mejor la Biblia lo dice bien claro la Biblia dice que Él es el todo poderoso y si es el todo poderoso eso, eso abarca que todo todo no hay más allá Él es el todo poderoso so, Él es capaz So, no importa lo que está pasando en 
nuestra vida no importa lo que nosotros necesitamos Él es que capaz de llenarnos de lo que nosotros necesitamos y gracias a Pastor White por ese mensaje que Dios le sigue bendiciendo Praise God. ahora mañana vamos a tener ¿quién vamos a tener? Vamos, tenemos invitado Benjamín Suárez y el domingo tenemos un predicador que eh, el, obispo, el obispo Bonano eh, nos, nos recomendó no lo hemos oído antes pero ¿saben el obispo Bonano? el obispo Bonano nos recomendó so, él viene a uh, Isaac López él viene el domingo So, vamos a oírlo por la primera vez yo creo todos nosotros y yo sé que Dios nos va a hablar y nos va a bendecir en esta campaña praise God que Dios le bendiga right? I congratulate the youth for such a beautiful wonderful start it's been a blessing and I know it's going to continue to be a blessing I got a secret message coming to me ah yes of course thank you the altar is open The altar is open in this moment and anyone who needs prayer can come up front and receive prayer. Anyone who needs prayer, wants prayer, the altar is open and we will pray for you. Praise God. And as the service continues, maybe you're feeling a little shy, you don't want to come up front right now, but we're not done yet. And even when the service is over, If you want to come then, we'll pray for you then. Okay? That's what we're here for. And now, the director of the youth, Eunice, will take our part. All right? Eunice, when you're done, you can pass it over to our brother Andy to conclude. All right? God bless you. Amen. 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 Small little gift to uh, Reverend White. Uh, we always look forward to having you every year, and this year it was no question we have to have our Reverend White start us off. Um, in here you will find some gas station snacks. <laughs> All the things you could possibly get at a gas station. We started you off. <laughs> and with us we have our brother. Uh, I hope y'all realize that as soon as I walk home and I go through the door with this bag of snacks, uh, remember I said, I said six kids, right? Those snacks are history. I'm going to see it and then it's going to be gone. <laughs> Thank you. Amen, hermanos, Dios les bendiga. Vamos a ponerlo en pie para así concluir esta parte. Felicitamos los jóvenes su primer día. Esperamos que yo continúe recibiendo este fin de semana pero no solamente este fin de semana sino todos los días que el Señor es lleno amén vamos a para concluir Padre Santo también saludamos a la hermana Milagro que, que pudo llegar hoy pero está un poco más mejor amén también tenemos visita a la amiga de, de Vanessa su nombre Dulce María, bienvenido. Amen. We also have a, a group from our Pastors White Church. We uh, give them the uh, uh, welcome as well. Hope you guys come out. And let's pray. Padre Santo, Padre Bueno, venimos a nuestra presencia, Madre Mar. Damos gracias, Señor, porque tú nos has bendecido con tu palabra. Esperamos hoy y siempre que nos llene, Señor, con tu poder, con tu Espíritu Santo, con tu palabra, con todo lo bueno de lo alto. Señor, mira nuestra salida. Esté con nosotros hoy y siempre. Guárdanos en el camino, líbranos de todo peligro. Te lo pedimos todo en el nombre del Señor. Amén y Amén. God's people say. Amén. Amén. Nos saludamos en el nombre del Señor.